Solar power promises clean energy, but there's a dark secret. They're not nearly as clean as we've been told. America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. The sun, friend to all living creatures, except the Irish. Besides providing life, the sun is also a great source of energy. The Biden administration has said they want solar energy to power nearly half of the U.S. electricity supply by 2050. But we're still a long way from that. To get there, yearly solar capacity additions will need to double annually through 2025 before quadrupling from 2020's level each year between 2025 and 2030. Could we even reach that goal without needing people walking around in solar suits? I can't tell if this is the coolest or the lamest thing I've ever seen. According to a new study by the U.S. Department of Energy, the U.S. has the potential to get to a zero-carbon grid through solar. According to Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, the study shows that solar could produce enough electricity to power all of the homes in the U.S. by 2035 and employ as many as one and a half million people in the process. Well, that sounds great. Is it realistic? Not sure, especially the one and a half million jobs part, since America hardly makes any solar panels these days. So, sorry if you were hoping to be this rejected G.I. Joe ninja for Halloween this year. Solar panels were invented in America by Bell Labs in 1954. Nearly all the solar energy patents since then have been in America. In 1978, America was making 95% of the world's solar panels. But by the 1980s, globalization began happening on a big scale. First, Japan started taking over solar panel manufacturing. And if Americans thought that was bad, by the late 2000s, it was dominated by China. Today, only one of the world's 10 largest makers of solar cells is American. Most solar panels Americans buy nowadays are assembled in China. And when they're made in China, it's not exactly green energy. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. Americans love solar panels. We'd slap them on our burgers if we could. Now that's a power lunch. But the true cost of solar panels is far greater than what we've been paying. To make solar panels, you need a lot of base metals, including aluminum, copper, and zinc. The use of all three metals in the solar sector is set to double by 2040. Solar panels also need cobalt, a metal used for building batteries. But a lot of these metals come from countries with very poor labor laws. Fun fact, if you say poor labor laws in a mirror five times, China will appear behind you and put you to work. Take the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC. It's one of the biggest countries in Africa and also one of the least democratic. It's also one of the world's top 10 sources of rare earth metals. Unfortunately for the big corporations that want to extract those metals, the DRC has basically no human rights standards for workers. These guys are climbing into these holes, straddling railroad ties and hauling up tons of cobalt with makeshift rope and, and no proper safety equipment or support whatsoever. In January 2016, a human rights report alerted the world to how cobalt is often dug up by hand under unsafe, sometimes deadly conditions by subsistence miners, including children. And China just so happens to operate a lot of these unsafe cobalt mines in the DRC. All right, who in the DRC said poor labor laws in the mirror five times? Mining in the DRC sounds pretty bad, but not compared to how China treats many of its own workers in solar panel manufacturing. See, making solar panels is quite labor intensive. It starts with making photovoltaic cells, or PV cells for short. The first couple of steps of making these PV cells involves processing quartz, turning it into metallurgical grade silicon, and then refining that into polysilicon. Well, that sounds complicated. Is China finding high-skilled workers and paying them well for their expertise? No, they're using slave labor. 
According to this report about forced labor in global supply chains, 95% of solar modules rely on one primary material, solar-grade polysilicon. And China accounts for 75% of the world's polysilicon supply. Most of that comes from Xinjiang, which is a region of China. And if you've been watching my other show, China Uncensored, you know that by some estimates, millions of ethnic minorities in Xinjiang have been put into forced labor camps. Yeah, that sounds bad. It also looks bad when caught on drone footage. Five of the world's top six producers of polysilicon are in China, and four of them have facilities in Xinjiang. And all four polysilicon manufacturers in Xinjiang have reported their participation in labor transfer or labor placement programs, which is a politically correct way of saying they use slave labor. I didn't realize you could just make up euphemisms for atrocities. No, Your Honor, he wasn't murdered. He participated in a bullet-to-the-face program. The reason why China relies on manual labor in Xinjiang is that solar panels are fragile. Around 0.3 millimeters thick, they can be easily broken if not handled properly. As a result, production in the past has largely been dependent on manual handling. According to Goldman Sachs, low costs from cheaper labor were a key factor in China's ability to lower production costs. Why do you think the U.S. can't compete with cheap Chinese solar panels? With their methods, China never has to worry about a labor shortage. But if you think child labor in Africa and ethnic slave labor in China aren't reason enough to think twice about solar panels, stick around after the break. It gets even darker. Welcome back. So what's the big deal if solar panels use a little slave labor, right? If you don't care about that, you might still care about the devastating impact solar panels can have on the environment, especially when they're made in China. Wait, the country that doesn't care about enslaving mothers also doesn't care about mother nature? Color me surprised. See, making solar panels requires a lot of energy, and that energy's Gotta come from somewhere. China's solution? Tons of cheap coal. That coal is a key reason why China's greenhouse gas emissions exceed those of all other developed countries combined. Luckily for China, there are huge coal reserves in Xinjiang. You know, the slave labor region. For years, China's low-cost coal-fired electricity has given the country's solar panel manufacturers a competitive advantage allowing them to dominate global markets. Concerns are mounting in the U.S. and Europe that the solar industry's reliance on Chinese coal will create a big increase in emissions in the coming years as manufacturers rapidly scale up production of solar panels to meet demand. You know, the kind of scaled-up demand that the Biden administration is now pushing for. Which is actually very progressive of Biden, since all that coal will lead to more black and brown clouds in the sky, Representation matters. But scientists say solar panels are worth it in the long term. The energy they produce could offset the amount of CO2 expended to make them in the first place. I'd say don't hold your breath on that, but considering how polluted the skies in China are, holding your breath is usually the best option. But there's another problem. Solar panels also produce tons of toxic waste. They're not the cool kind that makes Ninja Turtles. Turning metallurgical-grade silicon into polysilicon creates a toxic compound called silicon tetrachloride. Most manufacturers recycle this waste to make more polysilicon. But the reprocessing equipment can cost tens of millions of dollars. If it's thrown away and exposed to water, silicon tetrachloride releases acids that destroy soil and creates harmful fumes. But even if we reduce this waste during manufacturing, Solar panels eventually stop working, especially if they're poorly made in China. And when their lifespan is over, they leave behind toxic trash. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, as the global photovoltaic market increases, so will the volume of decommissioned PV panels, and large amounts of annual waste are anticipated by the early 2030s. Growing PV panel waste presents a new environmental challenge. The Harvard Business Review says the sheer volume of discarded panels will soon pose a risk of existentially damaging proportions. 
This is almost as bad as that island of trash floating in the Pacific. The industry's current recycling capacity is woefully unprepared for the deluge of waste that is likely to come because the financial incentive to invest in recycling has never been very strong in solar. That's because it's a lot more expensive to recycle a solar panel than to just send it off to landfills. But sending it to landfills is horrible for the environment. And not just because the possums in the landfills using solar panels to get a tan will get skin cancer. Toxic materials can leak out as the discarded solar panels break down. While discarded modules have to be disposed of properly in Europe, most other countries don't yet have such regulations. And if China is willing to make solar panels using slave labor and coal-fired power plants, do you really think they're going to make sure old solar panels are recycled properly? Even in the coolest slash lamest way possible. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep the show going. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.